Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today we continue talking about waves, and in this particular case, we will talk about pressure waves. Well, pressure waves is primarily it, it's it's about how sound actually uh, propagates through air, because the air molecules are changing the pressure in certain areas, and that's exactly most important example of pressure waves. Now I will explain it slightly differently on a more kind of a elementary level, but nevertheless it's basically about how sound um, distributes in the air. Mm. Now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unisor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because if you are going through the website you have the menu because it's a course which means there are certain topics which are logically related to each other and uh, obviously I would encourage you to go through topics in sequence as it is presented on the website not because you just found it somewhere on YouTube or somewhere else and also there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens the same website um, now, the website is completely free, there are no advertisements, no strings attached, so that's definitely a more preferable way to um, systematically learn the subject. So, pressure waves. First of all, there is a word which I would like actually to use, um, but it's a very long <laughs> word and I really don't like it, quite frankly. It's called longitudinal, longitudinal oscillations. Now, longitudinal, well, it implies that there is a length, actually, right? Long means something in length. So that's the oscillation which are propagating through a direction, and the waves are also propagating into this direction, which is different, let's say, from the surface of the water, when water goes up and down, but waves go across. In this particular case, waves of pressure go into the same direction as um, as the propagation of so the propagation of waves and, and molecules are moving in exactly the same direction. Molecules are moving along this line direction, and the waves are going through the same direction. So it's a higher pressure, low pressure, higher pressure, low pressure, and the molecules are moving this way. Well, they're not exactly moving that way because molecules of, let's say, air are chaotically moving in all directions. However, we can always talk about the probability of moving into certain directions. And if in, a, uh, in, in the uh, air where there are no oscillations, no sounds, all the molecules are moving in all directions with basically the same probabilities, but whenever there is a sound, which means there are certain pressure waves which are going through the air, then the probability to go into this direction, direction of the propagation of the airs, is slightly greater. And then the molecule goes back and goes to a back, back to its own uh, chaotic movement until the next move of the pressure comes. And that's what I will be explaining in a simple example. Now, my simple example is uh, consider you have a cylinder, a long one, with a piston on the top. And we are in control of this piston, we can move it up and down. Now there is air inside of this cylinder. Now the length is sufficiently long, so we don't really take length into consideration. And the diameter is not really very big, because the bigger diameter means there is some distortions from the one direction. I would like all, all, uh, to, to concentrate only on the vertical direction in this particular case, in this example. So as the piston is moving up and down, I would like to investigate how the air molecules will move inside that cylinder. That's what's important. So that's why I don't, I don't want to have a bigger diameter. It's a relatively small diameter of a cylinder but long one, so I don't really take the length into consideration right now. So, what happens right now under the piston? Piston is in the top position. What happens? All the molecules of air are chaotically moving. Mo moving. 
their chaotic brown 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 movements actually sometimes it's called so this uh, chaotic movement actually means that you don't really have any uh, kind of uh, notion about where exactly each molecule uh, moves but you can just consider that the direction every molecule moves um, has certain probability and the probabilities in all directions are the same so they're going uh, chaotically inside the cylinder in all directions. They bump into each other, obviously, they reflect, so that's that's what chaotic actually means. Now, what happens if I slowly, very slowly, move the piston down? Well, well that actually reduces the volume. Now, you know the Boyle's um, law that the volume times, times uh, the pressure um, is a constant whenever you change the vo increase the volume by, by factor of two, let's say, pressure uh, it decreases. If you decrease the volume, the pressure increases. But their product is constant if amount of air and the temperature are the same. Because if there is a temperature, there is a more universal law. But this is the Kelvin temperature. So this is a constant. But right now, our temperature we are assuming is the same. So we are talking about basically increasing the pressure if decreasing the volume, and decreasing the pressure if increasing the volume. OK, proportion, uh, inversely proportional to each other. OK, now, that's what happens if we are slowly moving it down. When we slow moving down, the molecules will redistribute in a smaller volume. Again, evenly, because we are doing it slowly, they have the time to redistribute um, among the whole volume, and uh, the, uh, the pressure will be increasing proportionally to decreasing of the volume, obviously here. If I move it in such a way that I will reduce the volume um, uh, by half, my pressure will double, obviously. Okay, so that's what happens if we do it slowly. What happens if we are maybe moving a, a short, abrupt push down? Very short, but very, s very quick. Boom, like this. Well, let's just consider now the molecules. They are, they have mass, which means they have certain inertia. Because of that inertia, the molecules immediately under the piston, these molecules, will be compressed, but they will not have time to redistribute um, down the volume. So you can consider that there is a small volume here under this volume, under the piston, which basically contains the same amount of molecules. Molecules are not escaping down. But this volume, when we short and abruptly move the cylinder, uh, the, the piston down the cylinder, this volume is reduced. So the same molecules under the thin layer um, under the piston uh, will be squeezed, really squeezed. And what it means? Well, it means that the pressure of these molecules will increase. So whenever we are start moving, basically, we are moving this immediate um, layer uh, under the piston, we are squeezing it, which creates a higher pressure. Well, what happens when this higher pressure actually um, uh, develops? Well, higher pressure means that the molecules are moving more intensely under the a piston than the rest of the molecules. Now, they don't have any way to go up, so the higher pressure obviously pushes them. Now, the molecules in this thin layer, since they are more energetic, they are moving kind of faster or whatever, um, or they are in a shorter distance between them, so they are kind of bumping into each other more oftenly. It means that they will push the next layer. Well, 
I am basically separating the whole um, uh, area of the cylinder in the, into the area. Obviously, in the real life, it's a gradual m modification of the pressure. But in any case, it, it, it really, it's really helpful to explain that there is a layer, and then there is the next layer, and the next layer. So the layer of the higher pressure, since it bumps into each other much more often than down, it will bump into the next layer and actually pushes the next layer. Now, as soon as it pushes the next layer, it, the layer immediately under the, um, the piston, well, it will expand because it pushes the other layer down. And the, layer, and, and the, and the pressure basically um, evens as it was before. Now, what happens with the second layer? Well, the second layer getting a push from the up, from the upper layer, will also be, be, be squeezed a little bit. As soon as it squeezes, the um, pressure is, in, in, is, is in, in increasing, and it pushes down the same thing. The same thing as the first to the second, the same thing will be from the second to the third. So this particular pushing will go down, 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 down. The speed of this distribution of energy, we are talking about energy distribution, right? The energy of the piston is distributed down the line. Well, it will distribute with certain speed. Now, what speed depends on? Well, there are many factors. For instance, initial temperature, initial pressure, amount of air, the quality of the air itself, I mean, how molecules interact with, with each other. So, any kind of a medium, and I'm talking about air in this case, but it can be any gas or, or liquid, um, it has its own properties. So, the speed of this distribution of the energy is very much dependent on what exactly kind of a medium is here. And there is a very important and I think very understandable um, analogy to explain this process. Consider you have a train with cars. Now, if this is a locomotive, which is supposed to go this way. Now, there are links here in between, obviously. All these cars are linked into some kind of a mechanism, link mechanism. Now, there is always a small gap. So it's like this. And there is some kind of a gap between the link, part of the link which goes to this car and to this car. Why do we need this gap? Well, because if the locomotive is trying to start, for instance. If there are no gaps here, it has to really overcome the uh, friction of all the air, uh, all, all the uh, uh, cars against the rails. If there is a gap here, here and here, then the locomotive will start and it will move only the first car. When it moves the first car, since there is a gap here, the first ca car will map, will go after uh, the locomotive. This gap will close, and then it will start with a little delay, the second car, and then the third car, etc. So the cars will not be moving at the same moment. All the cars will not be moving at the same moment. First the locomotive moves, then with a slight delay will be the second car, then with a slight de delay the third, etc. So the efforts, the energy of the locomotive is transferred gradually to the very last car as a wave. This is exactly the same mechanism as the waves of the pressure go through the layers of the air. So these gaps play exactly the same role as gaps between the molecules and every car is like a molecule. So whenever you have certain push now, it can be either beginning of the, um, uh, of the uh, movement or it can be, for instance, when you, when you are um, uh, slowing down. When you're slowing down, the locomotive slows. This car goes by inertia with the old speed, which means it will gradually close this gap between these two then this thing will go ga uh, close gap and then this will close gap and that's how the whole cars stop one by one with the 
um, this uh, wave of stopping really propagating through the train of the cars with certain speed which depends on many factors. Again, that's exactly the same mechanism. Now let me just continue. Now when we are moving the, the piston down, we are initiating the wave of pressure which goes from layer to layer. Now what happens when we stop? So the pistons uh, made a short motion and stopped. Well, at that particular moment, the molecules immediately under it, by inertia, will go slightly down, which means what? Which means that the volume of these molecules in this layer, in the first layer under the, um, under the piston, the, the volume will, will increase. The same molecules will move further, which means there will be rarity in this particular case. So there will be a low pressure. Okay, as soon as there is a low pressure, the molecules under the first layer, molecules of the second layer, which have the old higher pressure, will start moving in, into the upper part, immediately under the, the, the piston. So the piston stopped, right? So uh, the, the low pressure which immediately uh, developed under it will be compensated by higher pressure from underneath, so the molecules will go more to the upper, will push basically upwards, which means that they will decrease the number of molecules in the next uh, layer, and the next layer will have a lower pressure. So my point is that as soon as the piston uh, stops, the low pressure will start propagating in exactly the same way as, as the higher pressure. Same thing as the train. When you start, you're moving from one to another, from, uh, from, from the first wagon to the last one. And when you stop, again, the first one stops the first one. So the stop really propagates down. Same thing here. The higher pressure propagates down, and as, as soon as it stops, the low pressure propagates down. OK. So that's basically an explanation of how high and low pressure are distributing down whenever we are moving uh, this piston in a short move down and stop. Okay, first, when it moves, you will have a higher pressure going down. When it stops, there is a low pressure going down. So obviously the next uh, step in our logical explanation of how sound propagates means that we will probably have to make this piston um, making the reciprocal back and forth up and down actually movements with a relatively high speed. Whenever we are moving hot, uh, uh, down, we, we initiate the higher pressure and the higher pressure goes down the cylinder. Whenever we move the piston up, the low pressure, well the stop and moving it up. Same thing actually, whenever we are moving up the, goes, the whole thing goes uh, to, to that direction again and the waves will be propagating all the way down. Low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. And that's what actually makes the sound. Because whenever we have something like, like I'm talking right now, it means my, uh, the, the air around my, my mouth starts basically vibrating and then it goes to all the direction. Now why I chose this cylinder and the piston because it's easier to explain we have only one direction of distribution. Whenever something is uh, um, sounding in, in, the, in, the, in the room, obviously the sound goes into all directions, so it's kind of a spherical distribution of energy. It's a little bit more difficult, but it doesn't really matter. The whole thing is basically the same. So I have chosen this to have basically a flat waves. So the flat waves are layers of high pressure, low pressure, like high pressure, low pressure. <coughs> okay, now we have to really talk about some terminology. So if you have um, areas of high pressure and low pressure, then there is always a, a distance between um, the areas of the peak uh, pressure. And this distance is called wavelengths. Usually the Greek letter lambda is, is used for this. So lambda is the distance 
uh, well, in meters, centimeters, in whatever unit you choose, the distance between the crests of the pressure. So the high pressure has a peak at this point, and at the same time, there is a peak here. And obviously, it depends on the oscillations of our um, uh, piston in this particular case. Now, um, so this is the length, wavelengths. Now, if you are standing in one particular point, let's say at this point, you can measure a time between crests of the pressure pass by. So the time is called a period. Now, obviously, the distribution of the waves has certain speed, and if this particular uh, distance is covered by this particular time, then you have a speed B of distribution of the wave. This is the speed of the wave. Now, sometimes people are using frequency, that's number of um, uh, periods basically in, in, in one second, so that's 1 over T, that's frequency. Um, Sometimes there is an angular frequency or angular speed, which is actually 2 pi over t omega. That's the um, number of full circles, full, not circles, cycles, not number of full cycles uh, per minute. So one full cycle per time that goes to uh, angular frequency or angular speed, whatever. So these are terminologies. Now I wanted to express how the whole um, uh, uh, air oscillations are looking graphically. And I put the graph inside the description for this lecture on unisor.com. Now, well, the graph in this particular case, I would like to represent it as a two-dimensional, uh, two, two, two arguments, so it's a three-dimensional graph with two arguments. One argument is time, and another argument is position, how far from the piston my point is. So let's say this is x. Now, at any particular x, as time goes by, we have high pressure passing or lower pressure. So how this function p of x and t looks like. Well, let's just think about it. Let's talk about layers again. So let's consider a thin layer where this particular point X is. Now, if my um, piston is making uh, harmonic oscillations, which means its position actually is changing by something like A times sine of omega t, where omega is some kind of an angular uh, uh, frequency of oscillation. So we are assuming this is harmonic oscillation of uh, piston. So, and del del delta y is going a little bit down, a little bit up, a little bit down from the initial position. That's the move from the initial position, okay? Whatever the initial position is, doesn't matter. Now, when it moves this way, it changes the layer, we are assuming that this the same layer is here, and then gradually it goes down, right? So we are assuming that this thin layer is changing in volume, obviously, right? Because the uh, it's a cylinder, which means diameter is the same, so if we are changing, uh, so if this is my thin layer, and I'm still changing down and up, my volume is changing proportionally to the uh, to the height, right? So that volume, delta volume, will be uh, will be equal to also some kind of a coefficient, which is actually the cross section of the cylinder times exactly the same sine of omega t. So the volume of this thin layer is changing proportionally to the uh, uh, movement of the of the piston, obviously. Now, if the volume is changing this way. You remember this. It means that the pressure inside this particular 
um, thin layer would also be changing. So if this thin layer initially has volume V0 and delta V is a change up and down, then the pressure inside would be equal to, again, some kind of a constant, C divided by volume, which is C divided by V0 plus delta V. So what is my final formula? E of x t is equal to some kind of a constant divided by v0 plus delta v, which is b sine omega t. Well, so we started with harmonic oscillations of the piston, and we ended with a pressure which looks like this. It doesn't look harmonic. However, number one, it's periodic because sine is periodic, so this function is periodic. So it moves up and down, up and down, right? There is a period, the same period as this one. There is also maximum and minimum, obviously. The maximum is when the sine is equal to plus one, so the maximum, um, I mean, that's, that's the maximum of denominator, so it's a minimum of function. So uh, function is between its minimum which is C over V0 plus B and C V0 minus B. C and B are some constant which depends on cylinder, air pressure, etc. So it's a periodic function. There is a mi mi minimum and maximum. And then I basically draw this function, this function, using some uh, tool available online and I present this graph which I definitely cannot represent it here because it's three-dimensional waves and this graph represents actually how the pressure is changing at any point x at any time t this now why it's different for different axes I didn't put x here right yet so let's just think about how it depends. Now, as we know, the wave propagates with certain speed, which depends basically on, on the qualities of the air, initial pressure, and whatever it is. So what does it mean? It means that into the point x, this wave will come. Th this is a good, actually, this is a good formula for x is equal to zero. Immediately under the piston. Now, what happens in any other point at, at distance x? Well, the wave goes with certain speed, v, which we don't know, but basically, I mean, in this particular case, we don't know. Uh, but it exists. It it, it's some kind of a constant which basically depends on the cylinder and the temperature and the initial pressure, the number of molecules, etc. So it introduces certain delay because the same wave which is here will go down and to the point X it will reach later on. Now, how, how late? Well, the time shift would be equal to X divided by V. X is the distance. V is the speed of propagation. So this would be a time delay. How can I introduce the time delay into the formula? Well, very simply. Omega times G plus tau. That's it. And instead of tau, I can put x divided by v. So this is basically a formula which gives you two arguments, x and t. v is a constant which depends on the qualities of air inside. Omega is the frequency of how we um, manipulate with a, with a piston, 
uh, hopefully with harmonic oscillations, as I was saying. B and C are again constants, which depend on different factors, temperature, etc. Obviously, as initial pressure uh, in 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 the air. So, with certain uh, numerical values of these variables, uh, there is a graph in in the notes for this lecture, um, which actually looks like a waves on the surface of the water, actually, but. Uh, it does not represent the water, it actually represents there are two arguments um, T this is T and this is X and this is P so this is a time this is a distance and this is the um, uh, the pressure so there is a wave surface here it, it's drawn not by me, I can draw it like this by some software, which represents this formula. Um, well, basically, that's the that's the end of it. This is uh, the graph of the surface, which represents uh, pressure at any point, at any time. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's all I wanted to talk about. How the air propagates um, inside this uh, uh, cylinder. Now, what I didn't really talk about is what happens if it reaches the end of this cylinder. Actually, it will reflect back, but we will talk about this um, in, some, in, in the next lecture. Um, also, another important factor, if you are, let's say, producing certain um, sound in the room, like I'm talking right now, it goes not along one direction, but in all three directions, which means energy is dissipating, so that's why the air is, uh, well, that's why the sound in the air is getting lower and lower the farther you are from the distance, because the energy of the oscillations are distributed among greater and greater sphere so to speak. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much. You, um, I, I recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. It's basically the same thing as I was explaining. Um, plus, there are some pictures, much nicer than, than I'm doing right now. Um, and that's it. Thanks and uh, good luck. <laughs>